Hello, I'm Michael Starch. I'm from the SGV Tech Consortium thing. So, what I've got here is a fingerprint controlled LED uh, desk lamp without the actual lamp structure, but it demonstrates some of the circuits. So, what we've got is a nice fingerprint scanner here, and if I get the right fingerprint here, I think this is it. Ah, there we go. <laughs> and now I'm blind. Thank you very much. Yay. So, and then you can dim it. It is dimming, and then it shuts back off. So you saw three levels of dim, and well, now I can't really see. Kind of <laughs> but, uh, so basically, this is a project that I've created for my little cousin. I started in December or November. I went home for Thanksgiving, and she was like, I like to do my homework late at night, but my sister always turns off my desk lamp. And I said, aha, I can over engineer this solution. And so I immediately went online and found one of these guys. And hooked it up to an Arduino like three days later and had a little LED blinking and I said, I'm 90% done. And then I learned that LEDs are not fun to play with, especially when you're using giant LED modules. So I'll unplug it and show you some of the parts that we're using. So most important piece is this little yellow circle here. This is the ultra bright LED module and it has something like 20 or 30 super bright LEDs baked into this nice little wafer. And then I've got a CPU heat sink on the back because these suckers generate a lot of heat. Uh, so much so that I had it plugged in for about three seconds on my test, you know, just testing it to see if it worked, and it melted clean through the solder contacts and fell onto my floor. <laughs> so then I got some thermal adhesive and pasted it to this guy, and now we're going to overheat until about a half an hour later when it's completely saturated this uh, heat sink with heat and then continues to overheat. It'll, now, it'll saturate that? Yes, it will saturate this to the point where you can get a nice little burn from touching it. The fan on the back will solve that, but I haven't wired it up yet. So, um, that being said, I've probably destroyed this module by letting it run too hot far too many times as I'm showing everybody I know and getting lots of little burns on the palms of my fingers. <laughs> so, the next piece is actually all of this stuff here. And this is the, the heart of the circuit. What I found out is that LEDs aren't like standard lights where you just apply a voltage and go. LEDs produce light based on the amount of current running through them. And not only that, but as they heat up and generate light, they can, uh, if you just apply a straight voltage, have too much current go through and you can damage them. So what I found out is you actually need a constant current controller, which is this little guy here, uh, to make sure that the current is regulated so you get the same light output and who cares what the voltage is across them, you've got the right current uh, going through your LEDs. So after playing with this for quite some time and doing a lot of soldering and stuff, and quite a lot of math, uh, I got this hooked up. Turns out uh, this guy can control all sorts of currents and based on the supporting little components and lots of data sheets, you can figure out how to get the current you want. In my case, I want exactly, exactly an amp. And then this little circuit here is an Arduino circuit which talks to this really easy to use fingerprint scanner and reads my fingerprint and determines whether or not it should pulse width modulate the enable switch for this. So effectively the design is run it at high power and then turn on and off my constant current controller so that the LEDs receive effectively less current and dim. Unfortunately, LEDs don't dim linearly, which is why you can hardly tell that I'm dimming them because I currently have it set up to dim linearly. Um, so that's basically it. Uh, somebody asked what was the hardest part about the other project, so I'll just answer that question right now. Heat. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Heat so I found that LEDs heat up way more than you expect and you have to dissipate their heat before you burn them out. Also, linear voltage step downs dissipate a lot of heat, and so I've got this huge heat sink here and a resistor designed to drop the voltage, and it still overheats in a few minutes, so I've got to completely rethink the design of my voltage step down to the Arduino. So, in doing this project, I learned very quickly that if you're not, if you're just paying attention to voltages and currents, and you're not paying attention to where all that wattage goes, you can overheat components really fast. Yeah, go ahead. You look fast, you know, you do the hooking on and off, so you're driving current and then driving current and then is that causing any problem? So the part of how this buck controller works is actually an inductor right here. So this inductor says we're going to smooth out the current. 
So a buck controller is basically a bang-bang controller for you, those of you who know navigation. It drives the current up, and then when it gets too high, it just shuts off. Drives the current up, and then shuts off. So we already have a situation where an inductor is helping out. And so when you're turning it on and off, you get these little plateaus of current, and then they shut off. Little plateaus of current. So actually, the LEDs are always running on full brightness. It's just your eye isn't fast enough to keep up with the switching. And so your eye says, hey, that's not emitting as much light, which it isn't. But for the time periods that it is on, it is emitting as much, uh, as, uh, as much light as it normally would. It's just not on as much, and your eye is too slow to keep up. It's the same idea behind movies, right? They flip the thing so fast that you can't tell its individual frames. Go ahead. Uh, where did you get the LEDs? So all of these parts, except for the Arduino, came from DigiKey, and this heat sink <laughs> came off an old computer of mine. Uh, so I found all of these components on DigiKey, and I said it was easier for me to just order there rather than going to like 50 different sites and trying to coordinate them all arriving at the same time, because I had planned to build this over my Christmas holiday and hand it to my cousin. When I ran into heat issues and the fact that I didn't really know how to solder with an old soldering iron that my dad had in the basement and that was covered in rust, I decided we'll delay the, the manufacturing until I get back to LA where I have you know, tools and people I can consult. All right, I think I have time for maybe one more question, so go ahead. Uh, that fingerprint sensor, is, is that a yeah. trainable thing for multiple people, or is just one fingerprint? Or so this is a fingerprint module that you can find on SparkFun. Uh, I actually, sorry, this didn't come from DigiKey. This came from maybe SparkFun, but I actually found it cheaper on Amazon. The price was the same, but Amazon gave me this nice little cable, so I bought it from Amazon because I didn't want to design a, a cable to interface with this. How much is it? So this fingerprint scanner is was $40, they sell a $40 and a $50 version, differing on the number of fingerprints that you can store in its internal database. But it's a great little chip because it does the recognition, the reduction to a template, the 365 degree rotation and checking, so that you can um, do all of that on board and you don't have to worry about any uh, biometrics code. You just say, register a fingerprint and do you have this fingerprint on file? Or is this fingerprint user XYZ where you assign the number for your user? But you don't have to worry about, oh, are these the 10 points on the fingerprint that I'm going to use? Oh, is this rotated the right way to trigger the lamp? It handles all of that, which is really nice. Any other questions? Well, I guess I said I was done, so I'll be done now. Thank you very much.